Hello everybody, welcome back. Thomas Pollock here from Profile Tree, doing another tutorial on how to edit films in Premiere Pro. And this time we're going to be looking at effects, titles and transitions, and also a little bit of keyframing. So, what I have open here is just a tab, and I have a bunch of footage, and I'm going to show, basically imagine, making the opening of your film, or the title opening, the opening credits or anything like that. So, I think I'll basically show you how to make titles first before I get into the transitions and some of the effects that you can make. So to make a new title, you can go right up here to File, New, and click on Legacy Title. And that'll give you some options here, you can set the resolution and all that, so you can just keep all that the same, you can rename it, so say this is Film Title, Film Title, it can be done like that. So that gives you this, this window here, and to make it bigger you can hit Control Backslash on your keyboard, and that makes it full screen. And now over here you've got all your options. So you can see this is your type tool. This is so you can type vertically, so up and down. And then your selection tool. So let's just go ahead and create a box. Let's just make it the size of our uh, safety lines here. That's what this is, a safety box. So now it comes up and we could type in. This is, um, I'm going to use footage from uh, one of my earlier films, A Place Beyond. So imagine this. So that's our text. And if you highlight it all, you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want. And you can center it the same way you would in Microsoft Word or anything like that. So I'm sure a lot of people here have used programs like that before, or even Photoshop. Uh, a lot of today's stuff will be similar to what you can do in Photoshop in terms of using effects. And same for the next tutorial on color correction and stuff like that. So up here you're able to hit, you know, you can make a bold, underline it, italic if it's available. The same way you can in Word or Photoshop. And you've also got uh, kerning, so that's like spacing the, the letters, very similar to tracking. Uh, leading uh, it is for paragraphs, so if I do that and I change the leading, you know, it just creates a bigger space between. So we'll keep that blank. So what you what you can do then is I'm just going to center that and then so I can start moving this again I'm going to hit the selection tool you can also hold hold and control if you're on the type tool to start being able to move your whole box so we can move that roughly to the center and you can get it more exact if you want so I have that in the center and I want to change the font you can just go here and simply pick a font I'm just going to pick something anything uh, well I got something that looks actually okay how about Comic Sans I'm only joking. Okay, so other options that you have here are to make the text um, go through a certain path. So yeah, that essentially makes a path that you can then start typing on. So if I went in, it starts to follow that path. So that can be interesting if you're doing something for video or you're trying to be really creative, putting it around buildings or something like that. But I'm not gonna do that just now. I'm just gonna make a simple title for the opening. And you also have the ability to draw things, so rectangle tool, you can add, you can add shapes and stuff, so say you're, I don't know, wanting to place an arrow or something, you know, you can do that, simple as that, and you can create more than one text box as well, so if you want to put another one, you can, and be able to change the size, and then also over here you've got all these options, it looks like a lot of stuff, but honestly it's all straightforward, uh, your options, opacity, uh, that's just to change the position again. Width and height, that's just to change the dimensions of the actual text itself. And then you can rotate it. Font size, style, you know, is it italic or is it bold? Baseline shift, don't worry about that. Slant, you can see what th that does. Small caps, that actually just means that it stays caps. Uh, it stays on caps, but it's the size of lowercase uh, letters. And then you're able to specifically change the size if you so you can see what that does and that can be quite interesting as well for posters and all that sort of thing and you know if you if you want to play, make one name bigger than the other stuff like that and you can change the color so I'm gonna stick to I'm gonna stick to white just uh, because simple is good and you can also change the opacity of that then you've got uh, the ability to put textures on it, and again, definitely not going to do that. You can also put video textures over, so if I if I went ahead and put that in, you can see that that literally masks right over. Uh, but again, I'm not going to do that. 
But it means you have these options to do stuff like that. And Shane, don't worry about that one. Then we can also add strokes, so that creates edges around around the, the text. So if I make that blue or something, you can see what it does. Simple as that, and inner strokes just goes on the inside. Simple as that. And then you can create shadow. I'll make the shadow uh, a different color just so you can actually see it against that background. So yeah, you can see that it's placed a tiny, tiny red shadow and you can change the, the angle that it's at, the opacity of it, the distance. And then you can play around with the size and spread to make it softer or harder or anything like that. And background will just affect the actual background. Simple as that. So that's text, quite straightforward. Now let's get into what we can then do with this title, simple as it is. So now we'll look at transitions, I guess. So let's, now this has came up and it's in my project thing, I can just place that and then I'll zoom in. So I've got one clip here. So we can make that bigger. And what you can see here is this line having the, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Here, uh, this is the simple way of doing it, I would say. And we'll get into keyframing as well. So here is my title, and here is the length of it. Uh, let's say five seconds or so. Now, if you right-click here where, it says, where the FX appears on your clip, you have these options to have opacity or time remapping or motion. So if you click on opacity and make sure that's selected, uh, you're able to change it if you're wanting to make it faster or slower. And what this does is it gives you this. So being at the bottom is 0% opacity, and at the top is 100 and what you can do then with this line is add keyframes to animate the opacity. So if you hold in control, you can see it brings up a little plus sign. And I can click. And what that's done is it's created a point. And if I create another one, I can then do that. And that is your fade in. And you're also able to right click and animate um, what kind of what kind of smoothness it's gonna be? You know, you can ease in, ease out, and then you can customize that and be able to move it flexibly. So yeah, simple as that. And then you can have the text also fade out. So very simple. That's how you can do a fade in, fade out transition. The other way to do it is uh, by going into effects. Uh, and typing in dip to black or dip to, dip to white and you'll see what it does to this clip yeah. also a fade in but I find it much easier just doing this instead of having to go search and also just gives you more flexibility with it so then scene to scene transitions let's take a look at that and what options you have available if you want to create dissolves or you want to go really far out and have spinning things all over the place so say I want to create a cross dissolve, I can just go search for it here and then it'll be in this menu and what I can do is I can go from clip to clip. So say I want to go from that clip to this clip, uh, all I have to do is drag and drop and put it over. And that's it in sufficient media because there's in the frames and that's because uh, the clip ends at that point. So here is the dissolve and that represents where, uh, how long it's taking how long the transition takes. So you can make that shorter or longer. And you're able to change it on each side. So, simple as that. And if you right click, you're able to set the transition duration manually. And that's pretty much, and then there's all sorts of transitions if you go in. You know, you can do a page peel. Easy as that, you can just play with those yourself if you want to do a wipe. And that's how simple doing transitions are. So another thing to look into is effects, and we'll not go into it too much, and then we'll look at um, keyframing and stuff like that. So video effects, there's all different stuff you can do. I'll not go on color or anything like that. I'll go over something like, um, something quite extreme. So I'm just going to add this random effect here. And I can place that over my clip or I can put it on an adjustment layer like we discussed before. So, but for this time, I'm just going to use it on the clip. And that brings up your options over here. In your effect controls, that is where you can use all the effects and change their, their settings and all that sort of thing. 
So you can see what that's doing over here in the preview monitor, uh, the program monitor, uh, how that's affecting my image. And this is just an example of how you can place random effects. In the next episode, we'll look at color and how we can mask color to certain areas with the masking tools, which are right here. So as you can see, you can set whereabouts in the frame you're wanting to place that. So as you see, that's quite, quite ridiculous looking. You wouldn't do this for a film. But yeah, that is the sort of thing you can do. And you can also have this only affect certain parts of the image by drawing. Simple as that. Ah, well, that's for opacity. You can place, if you're clicking on that, you can do this. So that then only affects that part of the image. Like that. Whenever you move it around to that area, it'll only affect that part of the image. Uh, but we'll get into masking next time. Let's take a look at keyframes. So say, for example, I want the brightness to change during the clip. In here you can see you have, this is your window for doing keyframes and stuff. So this, I mean this does fall under color, but I'm just going to show you as an example. So if I want to change the brightness, I hit this button here, which says toggle animation, and that creates a keyframe. So I'll put that back to the start of my clip, and I'll not touch it. And then I'll go a few seconds in, and I'll increase the brightness. And simple as that, I hit play. And you can see the clip starts to get brighter and brighter. And you're able to make that animation f f uh, ease in and ease out. Which will just affect the same way the transitions will. And that's all there is to that. And you're able to hit this to go to previous keyframe. Simple as that, guys. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll get more comprehensive into using these masks and extreme color grading and then another one on cinematic look and stuff like that so thanks for watching everybody i will see you next time